Good morning, good morning guys. Welcome to Power Up 365 and today it is Sunday. This is week 3 of 2021 and every week on Sunday through 2021 I am sharing with you guys what I have learned for the week and the reason I do this is because knowledge is not power. Knowledge is potential power. And if I can just share with you guys, so every single Sunday, you need to reflect back on the last seven days and ask yourself, what did I learn? How did I grow? And how am I going to implement it? Okay. How is that affecting my, my, my life? Am I just doing stuff? Am I just reading? Am I just learning, but I'm not implementing? I'm not doing stuff. Your life's never going to change that way. Okay. And um, this week was actually um, quite... Uh, moving for me personally because certain things came up and um, when I was reflecting uh, last night I was busy going through the week and what I've learned and preparing for this this training and um, the certain things came to mind and also last night I was also um, I did a two-hour session with Tony Robbins and um, I really was fired up again because Tony Robbins is someone who has helped me over 20 years and every time I'm with him or I hear his voice and his energy, it reminds me when I was in New York or it reminds me when I was in San Francisco, when I'm with him and those, those things get stimulated again and I get really powered up. So, but in the same sense, something else also happened to me. So, um, I'm, a, I'm so against labels of kids. Uh, I feel these days um, the school system uh, labels kids quickly because of their inability to help them. And where do you think power up comes from? It's, it's all my experiences. I believe everyone is a genius in their own right. I believe every single hum, human being was born with greatness. They have the ability to become so much in their lives. And that's why I do these power up sessions. And if I can just find someone, if it's a child that someone spoke bad down and said, and label them, they can't do this or they can't do that. And they have these limitations. And if I can just touch them and reach to them and they can hear this power of session or they can come to an event or whatever that they can just say you know what I was born with greatness that label that that teacher gave me or that label that society has given me that's just showing me what I'm not good at but that doesn't mean I don't have greatness in me so I need to discover my greatness I need to power up my greatness because I was born with greatness so um the reason I speak about uh, the reason I speak about this because if I had to listen to everyone, I shouldn't. I shouldn't be here. Okay. Um, one of when I finished school, one of my weaknesses were languages. I am I'm not good with languages. I don't write well. Um, when I do, I do a lot of spelling mistakes. And when I finished school, the the my chances of becoming successful. Um, were so limited by the people that um, that taught me on how to have a great life. And they used to call me in, listen, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do this. You're not good enough for this. You can't do this. You can't. They were telling me all that I can't do. But when I was growing up, I mean, I, I must have had some qualities. I mean, I was head boy, um, vice head boy, and I was head... Um, captain of the cricket side, captain of the hockey team. Um, I used to speak a lot. And then one day I, I had this confidence to go out and speak. And then someone calls me and says, you should stop speaking because you're never going to be successful at it. You won't be a good coach. You won't be a good speaker. And I said, but why? He says, because your vocabulary is, is very limited. You use simple, small words that um, it's, you can't compete on the world stage with your vocabulary, okay? And you don't use good words. And then people in my own family were saying, you know what, I think you've got to listen to this person. Um, you're going to embarrass yourself. And here I am, I've stood on a stage to speak to 5,000 people. I've, I've had seminars of 200. I've had organizations um, 
hire me to speak to their, their companies. Um, I've been a, a lecturer at universities for the last five years. Now, what happens if I believed all that stuff that they were telling me? Where would I be today? Okay. And, and the reason why I'm telling you the story is based on the two books that I read this week. Okay. I'm still busy reading them. I haven't finished them. Oh, I finished the one, but I'm still busy with that one. So I want to speak to you guys about two books. Man Up by Petros, um, then this guy is a guy that came from Ar Armenia. So what happened was it was him and his, I think there were five in the family. And he, the, uh, Arme Armenia was a communist country and his dad got $25,000 together and he bought themselves, he brought the people to get out of the country and then come to the U.S. come to the U.S. for asylum, and then they did their papers, and they came into America legally. And he used to make these suits, and he, he speaks about how the police used to come to the house because you weren't allowed to make suits to raise extra money in a communist country. But he did that. He did that to raise the money, and he had to do it because he's brother was going to be 20 years old and go to the army and he most probably would die so the father said listen i need to do something now and he does something and they come to america they have no they have no money and they start struggling and this is uh, this is the struggle i want you guys to hear the struggle this whole family they they, they had no place to sleep they used to eat in garbage bag in garbage um Behind, behind restaurants, they used to throw out the garbage and they used to go get their food there. So they'd usually look for bread. If it wasn't moldy, they would look for food or whatever and they would go and eat that for supper. And their father would make it like a treasure hunt for um, Petros to go and get the food. Because at that stage, he was only six. So it was a massive gap between his brother, 20, and him that is six. And so... This is how they were. And then they, they started getting jobs, cleaning plates, cleaning floors. And, um, and then they, they, his sister got a job. And they all started working at the lowest, lowest levels you can ever imagine in the U.S., right? And they started building up. Today, he's a multimillionaire. And he speaks about his struggles. And what is his book's name? Man up. You know, um, the other book I read is Shut Up and Listen. Man up. There is something here when um, you've just got to push through. You've got to have a hard work ethic. You've got to outwork people. You've got to get through the struggles, get through the difficulties. That is so important. And then the other controversial book that I'm busy reading is Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. And there's two things I want to speak to you now. So last week I spoke about Outwitting the Devil. This was a book that was hidden away for over 70 years. No one wanted to publish it because it's very controversial. And um, so what now is happening is he is interviewing the devil. Okay, so um, that's most probably all in his mind and his and if you've read think and grow rich and you read this book there's a lot of contrast okay so i think for my opinion um think and grow rich is is, is all the positive things and all how you're going to go forward outwitting the devil is the limitations in your mind that the the devil really wants so it 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 most probably was just him interviewing himself and his other self. We speak about the other self, okay? And what the other limitations the other self can have. But he said, I'm outwitting the devil because the devil wants certain things. And just some things that I took out of that devil, out of that book. And I want you to compare it to this book, right? So, outwitting the devil. Now, so... The devil says that he controls, right? He controls 97% of the people on earth. 97% of the people on earth. Okay? And people believe, uh, he, while he's interviewing him, he says, you know, you guys all speak about the devil after you die, but the devil is here, and I control 97% of the on 97% of this earth. And um, there's a lot of questions and reasons why he does this, so I haven't got through all of that, but today I just want to speak on this one, um, 
or these two issues, right? So the one is, don't think that the devil is just after, after when you die and you're worried about that. What happens if the devil is right here, he's controlling your mind because he doesn't want, the first thing he says, I don't want people to think for themselves. If I can control their thoughts, if I can control their ambition, if I can control them to think for themselves and to believe in themselves, that is against me. I don't want people to think against me. I don't, and I want to get them when they are young. So the devil says, I want to get them when they are young. So how can I influence them? I need to influence the teachers and the parents and that. And so when we start teaching our kids at a young age that they are not good, they are not good enough, they, there's limitations in their life. Okay, the devil is coming into you because now you can't you can't go for greatness. You can't be great. That that's a problem. So self-defeating thoughts. If you have self-defeating thoughts, now currently I, I speak about things that have gone. I mean, ninety percent of things in my life go my way. Ninety percent of things that go my way. Now. Over the last year, I won't say that statistic is right, but if you play a long game, you will always win. Um, one of my, I, I was speaking to a colleague this week and we were referring on 2020. I said, you know what? I actually had an outstanding year. I had a great year. All my businesses were going, but I had, because of COVID, because of things going wrong, my investments did not go well. And that impacted me. Okay. And because that impacted me, you start putting doubt in your, in doubt in your mind. Now, if you don't get external powers to power you up, coaches, mentors, reading books, and that, that I'm busy doing, and I'm sharing every Sunday with you, you are going to find yourself in a challenge because you're going to have self-defeating thoughts okay and when you have self-defeating thoughts when you have self-defeating thoughts you will get bad habits that's what happened with us in COVID hey I wasn't going to gym I was looking after myself I took a photo um I think about 10 uh, 10 weeks ago 15 weeks ago of myself and I said how disgusting is that and I started a gym program got a coach and I'm just, every day I'm getting stronger and stronger I'm feeling better because I was having self-doubt thoughts things were going wrong investments were going wrong I disappointed people people trusted me and and I I, I disappointed them and I meant to be the power up I meant to build business great things and now I've got two things wrong because of COVID because of circumstances circumstances doubt started coming in and it reflects in your habits so my habits started getting back but surround yourself with greatness surround yourself with better people bam a few minutes with Tony Robbins looking at his videos I'm powering myself up and that's why I do this right temporary setbacks creates doubt I had temporary setbacks 2020 I had temporary setbacks it creates doubt this doubt is what I am fighting against. This doubt is what I don't want children to have. I am fighting for those children who are labeled with dyslexia. I'm fighting for those children who are labeled with HDMI or HDCI or HD whatever. I'm fighting for those kids. I'm fighting for those kids who can't spell and that I'm fighting for those kids who are labeled that they are that they are broken. No one is broken. No one is broken. You are born with greatness. All what they are telling you is your strengths do not lie in languages. Your strengths do not lie in maybe presentations. Your strengths do not lie that. But if you don't step up and find your greatness and discover your greatness, you will always have that doubt. You will build, you will have self-doubt and you will never live a great life. You will never go for greatness. That is why you've got to go for greatness. You've got to discover your strengths. You've got to push through. And that is what my mission in life is for. Yes, I go in and I build great businesses, but I focus on the strength. I build a team around that. I look at the team and I say, listen, let's position this team. Let's focus on the strength. Let's build a great business. Okay. I'm creating my own economy. I'm creating my client's economy. I'm not going to care about what COVID is, what the government is, who's a president, who's not a president, because I'm going to power up myself. I'm going to power up you. I'm going to power up your business. And this is, this was very important. Okay. Fear, um, fear creates people to think small. I love the first part of his books. He says, there's two things. The why the devil says, I got you. You know, what are the two things that I get people? Fear. And what are those two things? Fear of poverty. 
fear of poverty. Remember the last book I, re- I spoke to you guys last week. I said to you guys, people are selling out their dreams. Okay, they are selling. There's a cost to their dreams. There's a cost to their dreams, and you'll be careful. If you surround yourself with certain people that pay the bills and certain clients and you're comfortable with that, you could be selling out your dreams because you want that money. That money, you know, if you have that retainer, if you have that salary, if you have that, um, you're safe. You don't have to do anything. So you sell out. You sell yourself out on on the other dreams. You don't go push to build a new economy for yourself. You don't go after your dreams. You see, because fear creates fear creates people to think small. If you have fear, fear of poverty, fear of death, there's so many fears. And you fear that I won't be loved. There's so many fears in your life. If you live in fear, you will think small. You will think small and you will always fall under the agenda of other people. So this week was a, was a, was a very... Um, touching week for me for what I learned and it was amazing how all things around me how I was I was speaking to parents about their kids and labeling and that please if I can tell you one thing this week stop labeling our kids with what's wrong with them don't give them labels I mean and don't and don't have this these these names disability I mean, um, learning disability. Now you're saying to the kid, learning disability. You have a learning disability. You have a learning that now the kid knows oh, there's something wrong with me. I'm broken. Okay, learning disability. So, and people will say, yes, but at least I know what I'm working on. But don't label it. Don't label to break. When you break the spirit of a kid, when you break the spirit of a kid, that kid loses the guts, the power. They lose the ability to power up themselves into their greatness because they are defeated. They believe they are broken. Let's stop labeling our kids. Thank you very much, guys. This is Johnny Leonis. I hope you guys have a great, great Sunday, great, great week. And I will see you guys at the top. Cheers. Bye.